Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make these sea anemones in Blender using geometry nodes. They're fully procedural and if we duplicate one of them it will generate a completely different random seed with different colours and we're going to be able to alter all the values in our modifier stack. It's going to be quite an advanced tutorial. A couple of things we need to do before we make a start on this. We're going to go to edit, preferences, add-ons and type in node and enable the node wrangler here and then click this button here and click save preferences if you don't see node wrangler here you go to get extensions search for node wrangler install it and then click this preferences button and click save preferences the second thing we're going to change in this menu is go to animation and then scroll down and where you see default interpolation usually it's set to bezier we're going to set it to linear it will just make it easier for this project click this button and then click save preferences when you've set that to linear so without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing I'll do, is gonna drag this up so I've got a bit more space here. I'm gonna change it from my timeline to my geometry node editor. I'll then select the default cube. I'm gonna hit delete. I'll then hit shift A and I'm gonna search for mesh and go to torus. I'll add a torus here. I'm gonna open up this settings panel. Maybe I'll give myself a bit more room here. I'm gonna change the major segments to 24 and I'll just reduce the minor segments to eight. Okay, something around there. Change to viewport shading just so we can see what we're doing a bit better. And I'm gonna increase the minor radius to let's say 0.5. Okay, that's all we need. So now I'll increase my geometry node window here. I'm gonna click new to add a new geometry node tree. I'll then go to my modifier stack settings over here and you can see the geometry node modifier here. So now I'm gonna select my group input. I'm gonna hit G and grab this across to around about there. I'm gonna hit shift A and I'm gonna search for sub for subdivision surface select the subdivision surface and we'll pop it in between i'm going to keep it set to level one we can reduce this or increase this a bit later on in fact we're going to expose this value into our group input a bit later but we'll worry about that when we finish building the node tree the next node is going to be shift a and search for extrude for extrude mesh and we're going to pop that into here and as you can see what that does it extrudes each individual face from our mesh and we can reduce the size now we don't want to extrude on every single face instead we want to be able to control which faces we extrude from so over here on my modifier stack i'm going to mute my geometry nodes i'm going to tab into edit mode and maybe i'll left click select this node hold down shift hold down out and then left click and select that entire edge loop when i've got that edge loop selected i'm going to hit control plus and maybe control plus one more time and that will increase the selection from there i'm going to go to data over here and where it says vertex groups i'm going to add a vertex group and i'll rename this to vertex group i'll then click assign i'll then come out of edit mode i'm going to go back to my modifier stack over here i'm going to enable my geometry nodes modifier and now here where it says selection i'm going to drag this selection into the empty socket on the group input and now over here on my modifiers where it says selection i'm going to click this plus button and then we're going to select that vertex group so now it's only extruding on that vertex group Excellent. I'll then hit Shift A and I'm going to click Search and I'm going to type in Separate and we'll choose Separate Geometry. I'm then going to pop this in between the Extrude Mesh and the Group Output and we're going to change it from Point to Edge. I'll then hit Shift A and we search Mesh to Curve and we select Mesh to Curve there and I'm going to pop that in here. We're going to change the Extrude Mesh from Faces to Vertices and now as you can see we're getting some edges up here which should be emitting from each of the vertices. Let me just drop this down a level so you can see better what we're doing. Okay, I'll just pop that back up. I'm going to set the extrude mesh to 1 for now. The next node, Shift A, Search, Trim, and choose Trim Curve. And we'll pop that in here. And what the Trim Curve does, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It trims the curve from the start factor all the way to the end factor. And we're going to drive that with a random value node. So we're going to hit Shift A and Search, Random Value. We're going to keep that as a float. I'm going to pop this value into the end i have the minimum set to 0.5 and the max set to 1 and what that's done it's made the curve lines have a random length of values between 0.5 and 1. now these curves only have two points the beginning of the curve and the end of the curve and we need several points on each line so we can bend the tentacle and we do that with a resample curve so i'm going to hit shift a search resample and choose resample curve and i'm going to set the count to 24 so it's like subdividing it by 24 times just drag this across now that we've resampled the curve lines we want to distort the curve lines so i'm going to hit shift a and search for 
set and choose set position and with that we're going to offset the curves and we're going to drive it with a noise texture i hit shift a search noise and we choose noise texture and we're going to need a vector math so i'm going to hit shift a and search for vector and choose vector math i'm going to pop that into there we're going to change this to scale and then i'll plug the color from the noise texture into the top socket of the vector math i'm going to change it from 3d to 4d and maybe i'll give the scale on the noise texture a value of 1.5 and now if i plug this into the offset it might go a bit crazy yep so as you can see with the vector math due to the coordinate system it's offset the entire torus by 0.5 on the x y and z and to compensate for that we're going to duplicate this vector math node and we're going to set it to subtract and on the bottom vectors for x y and z i'm going to type in 0.5 so now we're going to subtract 0.5 on the coordinates and that should recenter everything i'll just move this w factor so you can see what it's doing okay i'm going to take the subdivision surface level down to zero so we can see what we're doing a bit better now as you can see with these lines that have been resampled so here's the resample function so it basically gives it resolution. I'm going to keep it set to 24. So if I move this W factor, you can see the base of the tentacles are moving. We don't want that. We only want the tips of the tentacles moving and then gradually as it gets to the base so they don't move. So that's an easy enough fix. So what I'll do, I'm going to hit Shift A and I'm going to search for Spline and we're going to choose Spline Parameter. And what this node does, it gives us the length of the spline and it also gives us the factor. And what the factor does, it will give us the data points for the beginning of the spline to the end of the spline. So then if I hit Shift A and I'll search for math and I'll add a math node and then I'll set this to multiply. I'll set the bottom value to one and then I'll plug the factor into the top value. And now if I plug this value from the math node into the scale, you can see that the tips are displaced, but at the base, they remain intact. So I guess the next move will be to give these some geometry. I'll hit Shift A and I'm going to search for Set Curve Radius. And I'll pop that into there. I'll just drag this across. I'll now add a curve to mesh. Shift A, search and search for Curve to Mesh. I'm going to pop that in here and then Shift A, search curve circle and I'm going to pop this down here I'll then plug the curve from the curve circle into the profile let me just disable my overlays maybe I'll increase the radius just for the minute and I'll reduce the resolution to three okay it's starting to come together now now we want to be able to shape these tentacles and we're going to do that with this radius factor here again we're going to want the information what tells us where the tip and the root of the tentacles are and we do that with this spline parameter so i'm going to take this spline parameter i'm going to hit shift d duplicate that and i'm going to pop it up here somewhere next i'm going to hit shift a and search for rgb and choose rgb curves i'm then going to take the factor from the spline parameter and plug it into the color of the rgb curves shift a and search for math and we'll choose the math node. I'm gonna set this to multiply. I'm then gonna plug the color from the RGB curves into the top socket of this multiply node. And now I'm gonna plug the result from the multiply node into the radius of the set curve radius. Okay, it's a bit out of control at the moment. We're gonna tone this down. So I'm gonna to go to my curve circle down here. I'm gonna set this to 0.25 okay excellent as you can see these are inverted these are really thick at the tips and thin at the roots we're going to change that and that's easy enough we're just going to flip this color ramp so i'm going to grab this control point i'm going to bring this up to around about there i'm going to take this control point here and i'm going to drag this down to around about there and now they're completely flipped it's easy to shape these tentacles how we want so i'm just going to make a quick shape using control points on here something around about here maybe drag this out to about there i'm going to bring this down to around about here and maybe i'll drag this up to something around about there obviously you can adjust these however you see fit if you want the tips to be quite thick you can see you've actually got holes in to fix that you just go to fill caps on your curve to mesh but i'm going to have those shrink to zero maybe i'll turn the resolution up on the curve circle to four just to give it a bit more resolution okay you can kind of have fun with this just make it however you see fit okay that will do me for now 
maybe I'm going to increase my subdivision surface to level one just so we've got a few more now we don't want every single tentacle to be the same I want to randomize these I'll just box select these I'm gonna hit G just drag these up a little bit to randomize these there's a node which can identify the index of each individual face where we extruded from and that's called evaluate on domain node so I'm gonna hit shift a and search for evaluate and we're gonna choose the evaluate on domain I'll pop that under the multiply node I'll then duplicate the multiply node pop that here and then plug the evaluate on domain in the bottom socket so at the moment it's set to point we want to set it to spline and the reason we set it to spline is because we want to identify the index of each individual spline considering we haven't converted it to a mesh yet everything past this node is going to be mesh everything prior to that node is going to be a curved spline so that's why that's set to spline now if i turn this value up you can see it's identified all the splines but now we need to give that a random value so i hit shift a and we search for random for random value i'll then pop that random value there and i'm going to pop this into the evaluate on domain and we can choose the thresholds so some of them are thick some of them are thin so maybe i'll set the minimum to four and the maximum to six and i'll turn the value on this multiply node to around about two or one perhaps that's a good number excellent maybe i can adjust this curve a bit more i'll just bring this down maybe bring this across you can change your profile to get whatever look that you're going for so you should have something that looks like this now the next couple of nodes that we're going to add are going to be for the benefit of the materials so first off i want to be able to capture an attribute that tells us the length of each tentacle so we can use that information in the shader editor to use as a mask between the base and the tip of each tentacle so we can add a gradient of color and to do that i'm going to hit shift a and we'll search for store and we're going to choose store named attribute and that attribute we're going to call length and to capture the length if you remember we're going to use the spline parameter so i'll click this spline parameter node down here i'm going to hit shift d and drag it up to here and if you remember the value between zero to one is this factor here which we then plug into the value we're capturing this factor and we've called it length and when we're in the shader editor we can then use that length attribute to color the tentacles the next attribute i want to capture is each individual tentacle is being extruded from each individual individual face and I want the index of each individual face so that way we can add a random color for every single tentacle so if I had the color of red and color of blue all these would have random colors of red and blue to do that again we're gonna use a store named attribute so I'm gonna hit shift D and I'll rename this to island I'll then pop that in between the curve to mesh and the group output and to get that data I'm just gonna hit shift A and I'm gonna search for mesh island i'm going to pop that here i'm then going to hit shift a and we'll search for math and we'll choose the math node and we're going to set this to divide and the reason we're choosing this mesh island is because it's not calculating each individual face that's extruded because we've already gone past the fact that it's been a face we then converted it to a spline curve which we've then converted back to a mesh and so each of these tentacles is a unique mesh separate from each other and what this island count does it basically tells us how many individual mesh islands there are and the island index so for each tentacle it will give it an index number so this tentacle might be one this might be two this one might be three for example so we want to divide the amount of tentacles by its each individual index number so it can identify each tentacle and then we plug that into the value so that's what we're capturing and again that's what we can take into the material editor to give each tentacle a unique color just a couple more nodes so now i'll go to my shader editor over here i'm going to add a material and we'll call this tentacles I'll then add another material i'll click new and i'll name this body so then in my geometry nodes i'm going to hit shift a and i'm going to search for set and we'll choose set material i'm going to pop that into here and i'm going to choose that material which is tentacles i've actually spelt that wrong never mind so next up we need to join the geometry so i'm going to hit shift a and go to geometry or search and we'll choose join geometry i'm going to pop that in there now i can drag the geometry from this group input here and i can drag it all the way over to here and that will join the original mesh so we should still have the original mesh under there 
if you can see it I don't want to do that instead I'm going to disconnect that and I'll duplicate this group input by hitting shift D and I'll pop this down here and I'll plug the geometry from this duplicate group input into here maybe I'll put it in the bottom socket and also want to add a set material in between the group input this is so the tentacles will have a different material to what the body does so now I can change it from tentacles to body let me just give the tentacles a viewport color so we can see what we're doing and I'll give the body a different viewport color so we can see what we're doing and if I didn't have this node the body will automatically inherit the tentacle material okay I'll go back to my modifier stack over here and now we'll expose these values so they appear in our modifier so the first value I'm going to expose will be this level and that will appear over here I'll then hit N and I'm going to click this group button where it says level I'll double click and I'll replace it with tentacle count and maybe I'll set the max to something like four because I don't want to go OTT might crash my computer the next factor I want to expose would be the resample curve so this is going to be the resolution so I'll just drag this over to here and I'll drag my count from the resample curve into the bottom socket of the group input and I'll rename that count to resolution maybe I'll set a max value to around about 32 and the reason is if we drag this all the way up we don't want to drag it to like a thousand or whatever because it will make blender crash so if we set a maximum value here we should be in the safe zone the next value I want to expose will be this one and that will be the thickness master so I'll grab my group input I'm gonna hit G just grab this up and I'll drag the value from this multiply node into the bottom socket here and I'll rename that value to thickness master and then if you remember this was the minimum thickness and this was the max thickness and so from this random value I'm going to drag the min into the bottom socket and the max into the bottom socket again and for the min I'm going to type in min thickness and for the max I'm going to type in max thickness I'm just going to scroll out I'll just drag this across over to here and on our extrude mesh this offset is going to serve as our length master so I'm going to drag that factor pop it into the bottom socket and I'm going to rename it to length master and if you remember where the trim curve is we've got the length minimum and length maximum so I'm going to take this random value that's plugged into the trim curve I'm going to drag the min value into the bottom socket and the max value into the bottom socket and I'm going to rename this one to length min and the next one length max the next value will be the noise strength or noise magnitude so from this spline parameter near the noise texture which plugs into the vector scale I'm going to drag this value into the bottom socket and I'm going to rename this to noise magnitude I'll then go to my noise texture drag the W factor into the bottom socket I'm going to drag the scale into the bottom socket I'm going to grab the detail into the bottom socket the roughness into the bottom socket and the distortion into the bottom socket and I'm going to rename these to noise W noise scale noise detail noise roughness and noise distortion I'll get back to you as soon as I'm done now if you remember when I plugged in this selection where we've got our vertex group I'm actually going to rename that selection tab there which is over here so I'm going to double click on selection and I'm going to type in vertex group so now we can easily identify the vertex group and I'm going to drag that all the way down to the bottom so maybe we can expose this resolution here which is the radius resolution so I'm just going to grab this resolution and I'm going to pop it into the bottom socket and I'm going to rename it to radius resolution and I'm going to drag this all the way up so it's underneath the spline resolution I'll just drag it down because I want it underneath so with the radius resolution selected I'm going to set a maximum to 8 I wouldn't go any higher than that because you might crash bender I'll just check the resolution 
it's set to 32 for the max okay the default value is 24 you could probably reduce that number so there's going to be a couple more values we're going to expose here or if we've got these random values so this was the trim curve so this is a random seed for the length of the tentacles and this was the random value for the thickness of each tentacle and I want to expose those into the same socket so with this seed for the random value on the thickness I'm going to pop it into the bottom socket and this seed on this random value for the length I'm going to pop that into the same socket so now I can change a random value for the thickness and length just by clicking this seed and I'm going to rename that to random seed and I'll drag the random seed all the way to the very top but it has to be below the geometry so I'm just going to drag that up to where it says tentacle count pop that in there and now we've got the random seed which we can change on the fly which will give a random length and a random thickness of each tentacle just going to set that to its default value of zero maybe I'll increase the radius resolution okay that's looking a bit better now okay now I want to expose the materials so we just drag this across here maybe down there just so I can see what I'm doing a bit better now I'll drag from this set material I'm going to drag this into the bottom socket here and I'll drag this material into the bottom socket and this top material we call cool. tentacle material and this bottom one we'll call cool body material maybe I can delete this group input here and we'll just plug the original geometry into there okay I'll just hit N to close that panel and this is pretty much the geometry node structure finished so these are all the controllers so you can change the resolution change the thickness master thickness minimum thickness max change the length master the length minimum the length maximum the noise magnitude I wouldn't go any higher than one you might be able to go higher than one depending on what you want the noise W factor which we can animate with keyframes uh, we've got the noise scale so we can choose a bigger noise pattern for example or we can choose a smaller noise pattern with a higher number and then animate the noise from there i'm going to set it to one the noise detail the roughness the distortion of the noise they're all going to give different effects and we can change the vertex group on the fly as well so all our controllers are there the next thing we need to do is we need to rename this to something appropriate like an enemy generator i'm going to rename mine to like and subscribe thanks folks you're absolute legends and now i'm just going to spend a few minutes tidying up this node structure i'll show you the basic principles i'm going to hold down shift right mouse button and drag and it's going to add these node points here i'll then hit g and grab it into a place of my choosing i'll then hit shift right mouse button drag and i can select two of these points and hit s y and zero for example and I'm just going to do that along this entire node structure until everything's nice and clean and I'll get right back to you. Okay folks, that's the final node tree. It's a lot neater now, it's easier to read. I guess it's time to move on to materials now. So the first material we'll make will be for the tentacles. I'll click this button here, I'll change it from geometry node editor to the shader editor. Maybe I'll reduce the tentacle count just while I'm working. I'm also going to change mine to cycles. You can work from EV if you like, but I'm gonna change mine to cycles and I'll make sure that I've got GPU compute on. I'm going to change my color management transform from AGX to standard for now. On the final render, I'll probably use AGX because you've got more dynamic range there. I'll then go to my rendered view, viewport shading, 
and I'm going to click this arrow button here and I'm going to turn off scene world and scene lights and maybe I'll give a strength of let's say 0.5 that should do I might even change the HDR maybe a studio lighting scenario would help I might need to turn the strength up to 0.75 just so we've got something to work with I'll go back to my modifiers over here decrease this window give us a bit more space in fact I'm going to turn my tentacle count up to one to color these tentacles we have to go to our material tab and we have to make sure that we've got the tentacles enabled so that's our active material which should be reflective up here I'll quickly go back to my modifiers and if you remember we captured two attributes in the geometry node editor which was called island and length so the island gave random colors to each individual tentacle and the length attribute will give us a gradient mask between the root and the tip of each tentacle. So the first attribute we're gonna capture is gonna be the island. So I'm gonna hit shift A and we're gonna search for attribute and we'll bring in this attribute node here. I'll then type in island. The spelling in this attribute node, island has to be identical to the capture attribute node, which we made in geometry nodes. So if you can see down here, the spelling is identical to what's in the shader editor over here. So I'm going to drag the color from this attribute node into the base color of the principal BSDF. As you can see, it's given random colors all the way around. Maybe I'll just do it in viewport shading for now. I'll then hit shift A and go to converter and color ramp. I'm going to pop the color ramp in between here. So I'm going to hold down control, right mouse button and drag. I'm going to click the plus button on this color ramp once and I'll choose a color palette which is going to be complementary colors on the color wheel. So this first flag I'm going to set to a pinky color, probably something around there. This middle flag I'm going to set to a blue color, something around there. I'm going to make sure the saturation and value is all the way up. And for this third flag I'm going to set this to kind of an aqua green so then all the colors are basically on one side of this color wheel and by doing it this way keeping to one half of the color wheel when we duplicate the mesh and it randomizes the colors all it's going to do is it will rotate the color wheel a notch or two so we'll always have complementary colors every time we duplicate this mesh so now when i plug the color from the attribute node into the factor of the color ramp they've all got random colors based on our color palette okay i'll just disconnect that i'm then going to hit shift d and duplicate this attribute node i'm then going to change it from island to length again the spelling has to be identical to what you've got in geometry nodes on the capture attribute i'll then plug the color from the attribute node into the factor and as you can see we're now getting that gradient which is based on the length value so now i want to mix these together so i'm going to hit shift a color and i'm going to choose mix color I'll then pop that mix color in between the attribute and the color ramp I'm then going to plug the top attribute from the island into the bottom socket and now we can change this color mix factor to suit our needs I'm going to change it to something like 0.15 just so there's a subtle color variation in each tentacle so now if I was to duplicate this object by hitting shift D and X I'll bring it over to there I'll just turn off my overlays they're going to be identical and to give it that random color factor I'm going to hit shift a input and I'm going to choose object info shift a converter math I'm going to set the math to multiply I'm just going to give this a random high number 8421 that'll do I'll then plug the random value into the top socket of the multiply node and then I hit shift a go to color hue saturation value I'll then pop that in between the color ramp and the principal BSDF and then I'll take this value from the multiply node and plug it into the hue. So now we've got completely different colors. If I just select that object again, hit shift D and X. So we're going to have completely different colors, but they're all going to be complementary colors on the color wheel. I'll just re-enable my overlays. I'll select that object. I'll delete. I'll select this object. I'm going to hit delete i then select this one now i want to add some emission on the tips of these tentacles and we're going to achieve that with the length but we're going to use the factor instead so now if i go to the emission on the principal bsdf i'm going to open that up and i'm going to set the strength to one just so we can see what we're doing here i'll just box select these two i'm going to hit g drag this across and i'm going to take the color from here and i'm going to plug it into the color on the emission i'm then going to hit shift a add converter and we go for color ramp i'll then plug the factor from this length attribute into the factor of the color ramp then i'll take the color from the color ramp into the strength i'll then change this from linear to constant if i just zoom in here and now if i drag this factor here you can see where the emission is appearing on the tentacles so maybe i just want the tips to be emissive so i'll just drag it to around there 
and we can change the brightness of this strength we then click the color and with this value here that represents the strength so say i wanted a strength of 10 i'll type in 10 on the value hit enter and now the strength of the emission has increased again we can control what parts we want to be emissive i just want the very tips to be emissive it's so when it's dark for example if i go into rendered view i'll just disable my strength of the world now you can see it's just the tips that are emissive okay i'll just pop this back up for now 0 0.5 0 0.75 okay as for the roughness i'm going to turn this up to 0.75 i don't want them shiny i think the tips are going to be a bit bright there so i might turn the white value on this color ramp down to let's say 2.5 or 5 something around there don't want it too bright okay i'd say 2.5 i'd be happy with that so now under subdivision surface i'm going to turn the weight to maybe 0.25 see what that looks like it's hard to tell what the subsurface is doing with this world shader so i'm going to turn scene world and scene lights back on i'll then select my light i'm not sure what kind of light is in my scene okay it's a point light i'm going to change it to sun lamp and i'm going to set the value to 10 i'll just hit numpad 7 to go into top view i'm just going to hit g take it behind i'm going to hit r rotate it round and maybe hit 3 for side view and rotate it up a bit r again just to bring it up a bit more i hit numpad 7 and rotate that round to round about there i'll then hit numpad 1 to go into front view and the reason i'm doing this i want to see how much light passes through so if i select this object and then i go to my subsurface scattering up here you can see that the light is passing through the tentacles as it would in real life so maybe i'll set a value of 0.1 just reduce that slightly maybe i'll increase the scale to 0.1 maybe reduce it to 0.25 okay i'm kind of happy with that so i'm just going to flip back to the hdr and i think i'm going to change the hdr to something else this has got a sun in it so maybe that one okay i can reduce the strength 0.5 this is just something to work with we'll do the final lighting in a bit let me just check that i've got everything down that all looks okay to me maybe i can reduce my specular down to 0.25 i'll just then collapse that specular so yep i'd say that's probably the tentacles done just to give it a little row test, I'm going to hit Shift D, X, Shift D, X, Shift D, X. Excellent. So now I hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z to undo all that. Now we need to work on the body material. So I'll go to my modifier. I'll then reduce the tentacle count so I can see the body underneath. I'm going to go to my material over here. I'm going to select the body material, go back to my modifiers. This is going to be a similar kind of setup. So we're going to use the same kind of colors, but they're going to be a bit less saturated. So let's just go into viewport render so we can see what we're doing here. Maybe I can hit Z and shade smooth as well to smooth it off. So with your body material selected, I'm going to hit shift A, converter, and we go for color ramp. I'm just going to check the colors of the previous material. So I'll go to slot two to slot one. We might even be able to copy this node. So I'm going to hit Control C over this node. I'll go to slot two, which is the body. I'm going to hit Control V. Oh, excellent, we can copy it. So I'll just delete this color ramp. We don't need that. So for the green, I'm going to turn the saturation down to 0.75. For the blue, I'm going to turn the saturation down to 0.75. And we'll do the same for this pinky color, 0.75. I'll then plug the color ramp into the base color of the principal BSDF. I'm going to turn the roughness to 0.75 and the specular to 0.25 because that was the same as the other principal BSDF. I want it to kind of match. So now I want to add a noise texture. So that's Shift A, go to Texture and we'll choose Noise Texture. I'm going to change it from 3D to 4D. And with the Node Wrangler enabled, I can select the Noise Texture and hit Control T and that will add a texture coordinate node and a mapping node set to generated. I'll then plug the factor into the color ramp and I'm gonna change the scale to something around about 10. So I'm gonna increase the saturation of that. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, color, and we choose hue saturation value and I'll set the saturation value to 1.25 just to bump it up slightly. I'm gonna turn the roughness all the way down to zero on the noise texture node and when we duplicate this, we want to randomize this pattern. And if you remember to do that, we do it with an object info node. So that's shift A, go to input object info. And then I'll take this random value and plug it into the W factor. So now every time I duplicate this object, shift D, X, shift D, X, 
it's going to randomize the W factor so we get a different pattern every time. Hit Control Z, Control Z, just to go back here. So we've randomized the W factor. We can also randomize this hue value, but to match it with the tentacles. So I'm going to duplicate this object info node, Shift D. I'm going to bring that up to around about there. I'll then add a math node. So Shift A, Converter, and we choose math node. We're going to set it to multiply. And if you remember, the random value we gave the tentacles was 8421. So if you remember, in our tentacles, with this object random value, we gave it a number of 8421. So we want to ensure that the body has that same random value number, 8421. It can be any number, as long as it's the same. And then when we plug this into the hue, so when we duplicate this object, it's going to ensure that the body color is in sync with the tentacle color. Because if this was a different value, the colors wouldn't match. So I'm going to hit Control Z, Control Z, Control Z to undo that. So now we need to give this body a bit of bump, which is easy enough. I'm going to hit Shift A, and we go to Vector and choose Bump. I'll then plug the factor from the noise texture and plug it into the height of the bump node. I'll then plug the normal value from the bump node into the normal of the principal BSDF. This will give it like the illusion of depth. But I also want to plug that into the subsurface scattering, into the radius, and I'll give a weight of 0 0.025, just so we have a, a tiny hint of subsurface scattering on the body, not too much. And I'm going to turn the value of the bump node down to 0.25, just so it's subtle. Maybe I can decrease the roughness of the body as well to 0.5, but we'll keep the tentacles at 0.75. And I think I'll add two more nodes so we can slightly darken the body, have a bit more control of the color. So I'm going to hit Shift A, and I'm going to go for Color RGB Curves. I'm going to pop that in between the Hue Saturation Value and the Principal BSDF. And I'm going to take this color down just slightly, sum it around there, maybe slightly more. I'll then hit Shift A, I'll go for Color and Mix Color. And I'm going to pop that in between the RGB Curves and the Principal BSDF. But I want the RGB Curves to be in the bottom socket. And then I'll plug this value from the Hue Saturation Value into the top socket. And now we can switch between dark and the original color. Maybe I'll set the value to 0.5, something around there. We could drive this with the multiply random value node here as well. Excellent. So that's the material for the body. I'll we'll just go to slot one on the tentacles. I'll then turn the tentacle count up. I'll just drag this down. I'm going to hit Shift D, duplicate, Shift D, duplicate. As you can see, we're getting completely random color palettes here. They're all slightly different from each other. I'll then hit Control Z just to undo all this. Maybe I'll just quickly set up a few basic lights before we continue on. So I'm going to go to Rendered View. I'm going to turn on Scene Lights and Scene World. I'm going to select this light, which is actually a sun lamp. So I'm going to rename it to Sun. And I'm going to change the direction slightly of the sun lamp. In fact, I'll hit numpad 7. I'm going to hit R. Bring this round. Hit numpad 3. I'm going to hit R. Bring this down. And then I'll hit numpad 1 to go into front view. So that's one sun. I'm then going to hit Shift D to duplicate that sun. I'm going to center it on the X and Y. I mean, the location of the sun doesn't matter. What actually matters is its rotation. So I'm going to set the rotation on the X, Y and Z to 0. So it's pointing directly down. I'll just mute my original sun. I'll then go to my lamp settings. I'm going to change this to like a bluish color to replicate the sky and also increase the angle to something like 75 degrees, which will create softer shadows. I'll then reactivate the sun lamp. There we go. We've got something to work with now. So if you've made it this far, well done, folks. That's a lot of the heavy lifting done. I might just quickly set up my camera. We'll just give this a quick render. So I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view. I'll then hit control out numpad 0 and that will align the camera to the view. I'll select my camera on the X location. I'm going to hit 0 on the Y location, negative 15 and the Z location, 0. I've got 90 degrees on my X rotation and I've got 0 degrees on my Y and Z rotation. I'll just go to my render settings quick. Maybe I'll set the max samples to 2048 and a noise threshold of 0 0.025. In fact, I'm just going to reduce my max samples to 256. It's only a test render, it's not a final render. And then I'll go to my viewport and then hit F12. So that's the result so far, excellent. The next step is to model a basic body for this. It will look like a pin from a bowling alley, as you saw in the demonstration at the beginning of the video. We we'll then add a bone rig and parent it to the body, so we can then animate it to sway left to right, forwards and backwards. It shouldn't be too difficult, so I'm going to take this object here, deactivate the geometry nodes, and I'm going to hide it from the scene. 
Maybe I'll hide my camera as well, just so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to hit Shift C, and that will recenter my cursor in the center of the world. I hit Numpad 1 to go into front view. I'm going to enable snapping up here. I'll hit Shift A, and we'll go to Mesh, and I'm going to add a cube. Tab into Edit Mode, make sure all the vertices are selected. I'm going to hit G, Z, snap it to the grid until the base of the cube is in line with the origin here. So when I scale it, it will scale with the origin. I'll then tab into edit mode. I'm going to enable X-ray view. I'll then box select all of these top vertices here and I'll hit G, Z, and I'm going to bring it up to around about there. This isn't real world scale for now. This is 20 meters, but we'll deal with that a bit later on. I'll then box select all of these bottom vertices. I'm going to hit S2 to scale it up by two and then hit enter. I'll then hit control R to add a loop cut in the middle. Tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go to my modifiers over here. I'm going to click add modifier and we choose generate and subdivision surface. I'm going to set this to level two. I'll then tab into edit mode, control R to add a loop cut. I'm going to snap it to the grid till around about there. I'll then hit control R. I'll add one more loop cut here. Now I want to change from vertices to faces. So up here in the top left hand corner you'll see these three icons so that's vertices select this is edge select and this is face select alternatively you can hit one two or three so i'm going to hit number three to go to face select i'll then select this bottom face i'll then hit numpad period to zoom into the selection i'll then hit i for inset and i'll inset the face to around about there hit numpad one to go into front view just zoom out a bit i'm going to add another loop cut up here so i'm going to hit Control r to add that loop cut i'll then drag it up to around about there I'm going to hit Control r one more time to add another loop cut just to tighten the geometry and maybe i'm going to hit number three to go into face select and select this top face i hit i to inset that top face too numpad one to go into front view number one to go into vertices select and make sure you still got your x-ray turn on up here i'll then box select all of these vertices and i'm going to hit s hold down Control to snap it to the grid I'll say something around about there. I'll then tab out of edit mode. I'm going to deactivate X-ray view. I'll then hit Z and shade smooth. Go over to your modifiers. Click this button here and click apply. So that's applied the modifier. So now if I tab into edit mode, there's a lot more geometry. Excellent. So with this object selected, I'm going to hit G, X, snap it to the grid till it's around about there. So now we're going to make a bone rig for this. So I'm going to hit shift A, add, and we go for armature and choose single bone numpad period to zoom into that object okay tab to go into edit mode which is here i'm going to select this top control point up here i'll then zoom out i'm going to hit e to extrude i'm going to extrude it out to the top is touching that 20 meter mark which is in line with the trunk body i'll then select that bone i'm going to right click and choose subdivide and down here in the bottom left you should have this menu which you open up here and I'll change the number of cuts to three. So we've got one, two, three, four, and the root bone. I'm gonna change this window down here to a timeline. So I'm gonna click this button here and I'll change it to timeline. I've got 240 frames in my timeline. So now I'm going to change from edit mode to pose mode. I click this button up here and I'm gonna to go to pose mode. I'm gonna take my cursor to the top left hand corner until I see this cross here. I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button and I'm gonna drag it across. I'll then click this icon up here and I'm gonna change it to graph editor. So we don't want to animate this base bone because we want the base of the trunk to remain in place. So I'm gonna select this next bone up, increase this window here. I'll expand the armature. I'll then expand pose. I'll expand bone, the next bone, the next one, and the next one. So we can see the naming conventions. So it starts from bone which is the original, then bone one, which is the second one in the chain, bone one dot zero zero one, bone one dot zero zero two, and bone one dot zero zero three. So I'm gonna select this bone one and I'm gonna add a function because I want to rotate it on the Z axis and I want to rotate it on the X axis. Skip back to frame one and then under the X axis, I'm gonna add a keyframe. Under the Z axis, I'm gonna add another keyframe. And those keyframes should appear in your graph editor over here under the X. I'm going to go to modifiers. I'm going to click add modifier and I'm going to choose noise. For noise scale, I'm going to type in 50. For the strength, I'm going to type in 0.25 for now. That should do. And I want to restrict the frame range. Before we do that, I want to see the pattern of the noise a bit better. So I'm going to hold down control, hold down my middle mouse button and I'm going to drag it left until I've got the entire timeline in the scene. I'll then hold down control, hold down my middle mouse button and scroll up just so we can zoom in on that noise pattern. 
so I want to restrict the frame range on restrict frame range I'm going to enable this and expand the window and we want to start on frame 1 and end on frame 240 because I've got 240 frames in my timeline and I want it to blend in over a period of time so I'm going to say blend in over 30 frames and blend out over 30 frames in that way we should have a smooth blend in and a smooth blend out so if I hit play it's going to blend in over 30 frames and if I skip to here it will blend out over 30 frames excellent I hit numpad 1 to go into front view now I want to add the same modifier onto the Z rotation so I'm going to click this button here which will copy the modifier I'll then click the Z rotation keyframe and I'm going to click this button here which is paste modifier we don't want the same noise pattern so I'm going to change the offset to 250 now we've got a completely different noise pattern if I push play you can see it's swaying backwards and forwards left and right so the next step is we want all these other bones to inherit the rotation of the previous bone so I want this bone to inherit the rotation of this one I want this one to inherit the rotation of this one and this one to inherit the rotation of this one that's an easy enough step so I finished with my graph editor for now so I'm going to take my cursor to the top left hand corner here till I see the crosshair I'm going to hold down my left mouse button and I'm going to drag it across and then release and that will collapse that window in order to do that I'm going to select this bone I'm going to go to my bone constraints and in order to add any bone constraints you always have to be in pose mode so go into pose mode select this bone here click add bone constraint i'm going to choose copy rotation and that will do exactly what it says in the tin it's going to copy the rotation the target is going to be the armature which is the whole rig and the bone we want to target will be bone one because this one was called bone one okay now we want to change the target and owner from world space to local space so change both of these to local space and what it's doing is the target is this bone here and we want to copy the rotation of its local space to the owner bone which is this one into a local space so now if i push play you can see that bone is rotating the same way is this bone so it's inherited the rotation excellent now we're going to continue this all the way up the chain so i'm going to select this bone here i'm going to go add bone constraint copy rotation and the target will be armature and the bone we want to copy will be bone 1.001 because that's the name of this bone if you can't remember the name of the bones select your bone and find the name in the hierarchy again we want to change the target and owner from world space to local space and now we choose this top bone here i'm going to click add bone constraint copy rotation the target will be the armature and the bone we want to target will be bone 1.002 again we're going to change it from world space to local space for the target and the owner if i push play you can kind of see what's happening to test it out you can just grab this bone here in pose mode and click r and as you can see we've made a quite a good rig here now I can hit tab but that will go into edit mode as you can see up here we don't want that we want to go back to object mode the next thing we need to do is parent this object here with our armature G X snapping it to the grid until it's dead center I'm then going to go into wireframe view so we can see what we're doing and with this object selected I'm going to shift select the armature I'm going to hit control P and choose set parent with automatic weights so now if I push play, you can see that's animating with the armature. It's deforming as it should. Of course, we don't want the base of this to be moving. And that is exactly why we didn't animate the root bone down here. Because we can parent the bottom vertices with this root bone and exclude it from all the other bones. So in order to do that, that's a straightforward process. So I'm going to select this object here, skip back to frame one. I'm then going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to go to x-ray view i'll just drag this window up slightly so we can see what we're doing a bit better and then we'll select object data we'll navigate to our vertex groups over here and if you remember the root bone the one at the base was called bone so i'm going to zoom in i'll then box select all of these vertices here and under bone with the weight of one i'm going to click assign and now under bone two i'm going to click remove under bone 1.001 .001, i'm going to click remove on this one i'm going to click remove and on this one i'm going to click remove so now the only bone that will affect this vertex group will be this bone here now for these vertices here i'm going to go to bone one and i'll assign that a weight of 
0.25 and then I'll click assign and that means that this first bone that rotates will only have a 25% effect on this set of vertices and then I'll box select these ones and still on the bone one because it's still within that vertex range I'm going to click 0.5 and click assign and now that first bone will only have a 50% of effect on this vertex group I'll then tab out of edit mode I'm going to hit play just to make sure that it's all working correctly Excellent. I'm just going to collapse my armature up here, unhide the original torus object. I'm going to select that torus object. I'll then navigate to my modifiers. I'm going to enable that modifier just so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to select the bone rig and then shift select the body. I'll then hit S.5 and then hit enter. So I've scaled it down halfway. It's still 10 meters tall, but we can live with that for now. I'm then going to hit control A and I'm going to apply the scale. Let me just check it's working okay. Excellent. It's now with my tentacle object selected. I'm going to hit G, Z, and I'm going to snap it to the grid until the origin is at the tip of the body. I hold down shift and left click select the body and then hit control J and that will join the object to the body. Obviously, if I push play, this isn't going to move. It's going to stay intact, but we're going to sort that out in just a tick. First thing, we want our geometry nodes back. So go to your modifiers, go to add modifier, geometry nodes, and click this button here. I've called mine, like and subscribe. You should have called yours an enemy tentacle generator or something like that. So just select that and it will bring back your tentacles. Of course, we don't want tentacles appearing everywhere on here. Instead, we need that vertex group, which is down here. So I'm going to click this plus button. I then tab into edit mode. We're going to create a vertex group. I'll then select this edge loop here. I'm going to hit Control plus, Control plus. I'm going to rename the vertex group to T vertex group for tentacle vertex group. I'll then give it a weight of one and I'm going to click assign. I'll then click Control I to invert the selection and I'm going to click remove. I'll then tap out of edit mode. I'm going to go to my modifiers and under the vertex group, if you don't see it, click this button and I'm going to choose T vertex group. So we have got a slight problem here and I'm guessing I've made a mistake in the geometry nodes editor. So I'm going to drag this window up. I'm going to click this button here. I'm going to change it to geometry nodes editor. Let me see. Okay, I see the problem. I forgot to connect this side option here into the selection and there we go that solved all our problems excellent that's a rookie mistake it happens to the best of us so i go back to my timeline just going to drag this down now if i push play again the top's not going to move only the body is to combat that we need to go to vertex group we need this head in the same vertex group as bone 1.003 so i'm going to tab into edit mode i'm going to select one of the vertices on the torus at the top i'll then hit l which will select all the linked vertices and with your bone 1.003 selected in your vertex group with a weight of one click assign now if i tab out of edit mode go to numpad one i then click play and as you can see the head is moving with the body excellent all we have to do now is adjust the tentacle parameters with the geometry nodes modifier that we made down here. I'll just collapse this armature modifier and let's tweak these settings. Before we move on to adjusting these settings here, I want to make a couple of changes. So one of them is going to be the animation of this object here. It's a bit harsh for my liking, so I'm going to mute the geometry nodes modifier. And if I push play, you can see it's moving a bit fast. It's almost like it's in a tropical storm or something like that. We want to mellow it out so it's like it's flowing with the turbulence of water. Skip back to frame one. I'm going to drag my cursor to the bottom left until I see the crosshair. I'm just going to drag this up to round about there and I'm going to change it from 3D viewport to graph editor. I then go to wireframe view. I'm going to select my armature. I then change it from object mode to pose mode and if you remember this was the bone which we applied the rotation to. So with this bone selected, I'm going to go to my graph editor and click the X rotation. I'll then open up my modifiers over here. I'm going to change the strength to 0.1 and I'm going to change the scale to 75. I'm going to do the same for the Z rotation keyframes. I'll change the strength on the noise modifier to 0.1 and I'm going to change the scale to 75. I'll then change it from pose mode to object mode. Let's just zoom out a bit so we can see what we're doing. Maybe decrease this window a minute. I'll go to viewport shading. I'll then hit play. And as you can see, the animation is a bit more mellow now. Excellent. 
So I'm going to skip back to frame one. The other problem we're going to have is with this object, the body, the material is set to generated rather than UV and that's going to cause a problem. So if I just reactivate my geometry nodes, I'm going to drop the tentacle count to zero. So we've only got a few there. And if I go to viewport shading, if I hit play, you can see that the texture is animated. We can quickly fix that. That's not a problem. So I'm going to increase this window. I'm going to change it from graph editor to shader editor. The tentacle material is absolutely fine. So we're going to change it from slot one to slot two, which is the body where the problem's occurring. And we're going to change it from generated to UV. Now the default cube and the torus are already unwrapped. And the reason it's stretched is because originally this was a cube and we extruded it up, which has stretched the texture, but we can use that to our advantage. So I'm just going to change the scale to 20 and now we get this nice stretched texture if you don't want it to be stretched you can reduce the scale on the y-axis but i'm actually going to leave mine stretched because i think it's a nice effect and as you can see we've got this seam running down the edge and we don't want to see that so that's a quick fix so i'm just going to skip to frame one tap into edit mode i'm going to select one of these vertices i'm going to hover my cursor over that vertice i'm going to hit l and that will select all the linked vertices i'll then hit r z 90 minus that's rotating on the z-axis by negative 90 degrees i hit enter i then tap out of edit mode and now that seam should be hidden behind the camera view so if we hit numpad one we can't see the seam anymore i'll then take my cursor in the 3d viewport and take it to the bottom left until i see the crosshair i'm going to hold down the left mouse button i'm going to drag down and i'm going to collapse that window so now if i push play the tentacle is going a bit crazy we can mellow that out a bit so i'm going to take my noise roughness all the way down to zero the noise detail all the way down to zero maybe i can reduce the noise scale down to 0.5 and i'll increase the magnitude to two okay let me just increase this window here so we can see what we're doing a bit better i'm going to increase the tentacle count i'm going to increase the length master to let's say two i'm going to increase the thickness master to 0.25 okay kind of happy with that i might make a little change to the geometry nodes as well because if we go to the radius resolution we've set the maximum to eight eight is good but we can go higher than that so i'm going to go down to my timeline i'm going to increase this window i'm going to skip to frame one i hit numpad one so we go to front view and i'm going to change it from my timeline to the geometry node editor with this group input selected I'm going to hit N to open up the N panel and I'm going to go to radius resolution. So I've selected radius resolution on here, which is under group. I'll scroll down and I'm going to set the max to 16. I'll then change this back to my timeline and let's just decrease this. So now we can increase our max radius resolution up to 16, which will give it a bit more resolution. Obviously, it's going to make your computer run slower. But for now, just while I'm working, I'm going to set it to four. Let me just decrease the tentacle count so I can see it play back in real time. Maybe I can reduce the noise magnitude to 1.5. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to animate this noise factor here. So on frame one, on the noise W set to zero, I'm going to add a keyframe. I then skip to the last frame, which for me is 240 frames. I then change this value to five. I then add another keyframe. So now if I push play, you can see there's a nice bit of random motion going on there. So if I increase the tentacle count to one, we're going to get more tentacles. We're just going to get a nice flow going on. If you don't want to restrict the frame range for your armature, you just go to wireframe, we drag this window up again, we change it from timeline into graph editor. We're going to select the armature. And if you remember, these are the two keyframes here, which had the noise modifiers on. We can turn off restrict frame range for both of these, and this will animate for infinity. Okay, I'll be happy with that. If you want to create a duplicate of this, we're going to wireframe view. I'm going to skip to frame one. I'm going to select the anemone, hold down shift and select the armature. I'm then going to hit shift D and then X and then snap it to the grid to around about there. For now, I'm just going to deactivate the geometry nodes modifiers for both of these. And with this armature selected, if I hit play, you can see they've both got the same animation and we want to offset this one. So with this one selected, just going to drag this up. I'm going to change it from my timeline to graph editor. And with the X rotation keyframe on modifiers, I'm going to change the offset to 1000. And for the Z, 
I'm going to change it from 250 to 1250 and now they've got completely different animations going on there. I'll then change this back to my timeline. We can go into viewport shading. I'm going to select this object. I'm going to re-enable the geometry nodes and select this one, re-enable the geometry nodes. Now we need to do is change a couple of settings on here to make it look different. So I'm going to skip to frame one and instead of starting on zero and ending on five, we're going to start on five and end on 10. So for the noise W factor, I'm going to type in five. I'm then going to hover over that and hit I to replace that keyframe. I'll skip to the last frame and we'll change this to 10. I'll then hover my cursor over that number and hit I and replace that keyframe. So now the noise pattern is going to be different. We can also increase or decrease the magnitude. I'm going to change the tentacles first. So I actually want more tentacles and I'm going to want them less thick. So I'm going to change the thickness master to 0.1 and I'm going to change the length master to 3 so they're longer and thinner. Maybe I can also reduce the length minimum to 0.25 just there's a bit more variation in length for this one. Maybe I can increase the max thickness to 7 just so there's a bit more variation in the thickness and I'll change the random seed as well. Go to viewport. You know what? I might even change the shape of the tentacle itself I'm going to change the resolution first off so i'm going to increase the resolution to 16 for this one and for this one i'm going to change the resolution to 8 where they're a bit thinner we won't need as much resolution so i'm going to change the profile of this it will affect the other one too i'll change this from timeline to geometry nodes and if you remember the profile was determined by this rgb curves so i'm just going to tweak this until i've got something what i like okay i prefer that excellent I'll just change this back to my timeline. Let's go into viewport shading. I'll duplicate this one more time. So I'm going to go into edit mode with this an enemy selected. I'm going to shift select the armature. I'm going to hit shift D, X, and drag it on the X axis and snap it to the grid. It's all around about there. I'll then select the armature. I'm going to go back to my graph editor down here. And under the X keyframe, I'm going to change the noise modifier from 1000 to 2000 and on the Z I'm going to change it from 1250 to 2250. I'll then go back to my timeline we drag this down now we just need to adjust the modifier so I'll select this object for the noise W on this one instead of going from 5 all the way to 10 I'm going to go from 10 to 15 I'm going to select 10 hit I to add a keyframe Go to the end one, replace that with 15, hit I to replace that keyframe. I'm going to turn my tentacle count down to zero. I'll then increase the thickness master, maybe 0.5. Let me just mute these ones quick. So I'll mute those. And for this one, maybe I can add a bit of distortion. So I'm going to hit one for distortion. For the length minimum, I'm going to set to 0.75. So they're mainly the same size. And I'm going to turn the radius resolution up to 16. Maybe I want an extra level on the tentacles. Okay, they're a bit thick for that now. So I'm going to have to reduce the thickness master. It's just a case of tweaking these until you've got something that you like. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. And I'm going to change the random seed. Maybe I'll reduce the minimum thickness to, let's say, 3. And I might increase the overall thickness to 0.3. Okay, let's just unmute these ones. I'm going to hit numpad 1 to go into front view. Now I'm going to show you how to make the other types of anemones. These are going to be a lot simpler. Let's just clean up our scene before we move on. So I'm going to go into wireframe view and I'm going to box select all of these anemones and the armatures. I'll then hit M to move and we're going to add a collection and we'll call this collection anemones 1. I'll click this arrow button here and we'll move it to that collection. Okay, I'll just go into viewport shading. And now I'm going to mute that collection. I'm going to hit Shift A, Mesh, and we're going to choose Cube. Tab into Edit Mode, G, Z, and snap it to the grid. So the base of the cube is in line with the origin. I'm then going to select these top vertices, enable X-ray view, hit Numpad 1. I'll then box select these vertices. I'll then hit G, Z, snap it to the grid. So it's around about there. Tab out of Edit Mode. I'm going to go Add Modifier, go to Generate, and we're going to choose Subdivision Surface. Set to Level 2. Tab into Edit Mode, Control R to add a loop cut, drag it down to about there number three to go to face select and i'm going to toggle out of x-ray view 
select this bottom face here hit i to inset just going to bring that in to around about there okay i'll then tap out of edit mode hit z to shade smooth I hit numpad one to go into front view and then going to click this button and apply the modifier i'm going to reshape this slightly so i'm going to tab it into edit mode and with these bottom faces selected i'm going to hit Control plus Control plus i'm going to keep doing that until let me go to numpad one until i've got these vertices selected here i'll then hit o to go into proportional editing and i'm going to set it to smooth i then hit s shift z and that will scale on every axis excluding the z axis i'll just bring this down to around about there bring this around something like that i'm going to hold down control kind of like a bell shape and maybe i hit number one to go into vertice select i'll select this top middle vertice hit numpad one to go into top view i'm going to hit control plus control plus control plus and maybe one more time like that i'll then hit s z hold down control snap it to the grid something around about there and then o to disable proportional editing i'll hit g z it's going to bring it down something around about there excellent tab out of edit mode go to add modifier we go geometry nodes and we're going to select our geometry node system it's a crazy mess at the moment so we need to add a vertex group to this so i'm going to mute the geometry nodes i'm going to tab into edit mode and with these vertices selected here i'm going to go to my data i'm going to add a vertex group rename this to tentacle vertex group i'll then click assign i'll tab out of edit mode i'll go back to my modifiers i'm going to re-enable our tentacle modifier where it says vertex group i'm going to click this plus button and we're going to choose that tentacle vertex group so now the tentacles already appearing on the vertex group i hit numpad one go into front view i'm going to reduce the tentacle count i'm going to increase the resolution radius maybe we want to increase the thickness as well so i'm going to say 0.2 i'm then going to reduce the noise scale to maybe something like 0.5 i'm going to skip to frame one and under the noise w factor on zero i'm going to add a keyframe there skip to the last frame and i'm going to change the noise w factor to five i'm going to add a keyframe there so now if i push play I've kind of got this animation going here maybe i can change the random seed until i've got something that i like maybe something around there so now if i go to viewport shading this is what we've got i can increase the length of these in fact so i'm going to increase the length master to two maybe that's a bit much maybe the length master to 1.5 i'm going to increase the length minimum to 0.75 because i don't want the variation in length to be too much okay looking good so far we can go a step further with this if we like so i'm just going to mute the geometry nodes i'm going to tab into edit mode i'll then hit Control plus to add this loop into the vertex group i'm going to go to my vertex group over here i'm going to click plus and i'm going to rename this group to wave vertex group i'll click assign i'll then tab out of edit mode go back to my modifiers click add modifier we're going to go to deform and we'll choose wave i'm going to drag the wave modifier above the geometry nodes i'm going to hit play and under vertex group we're going to choose the wave vertex group so now only that vertex group is affected by the wave modifier maybe i can increase the width to let's say 2.5 and i'll decrease the narrowness to 0.5 i should slow it down a bit we can also reduce the height to 0.1 perhaps and maybe we can slow it down so i'm going to go to time and i'm going to change the time speed to 0.1 just so it's nice and mellow there i'm going to change the offset to negative 1000 now if i go back to my geometry nodes and reactivate it and hit play you can see that they're moving along with the wave modifier so with this object selected i'm going to hit numpad 7 i'm going to hit g x just drag it on the x-axis to around about there i then reactivate my anemones now unlike these anemones the body matches the color of the tentacles on all of these i actually want the body to become a different color to the tentacles on these ones that's easy to achieve so i'm going to take my cursor to the bottom left until i see the crosshair I'm then going to left click and drag to open up a new window i'm then going to change this window to the shader editor and with this object selected i'm going to add the two materials so the first material will be the tentacles and the second material is going to be the body now for this body i'm going to click this number 10 and that will make it its own unique material and i'm going to call this body two this is the original body material and this will be body 2 material i'll then go to my modifiers and expand the geometry nodes that we made for this item and under body material i'm going to choose body 2 and so to change the randomized color so they're not synced with the tentacles all we need to do is change the seed value on this math node which is plugged into the random and the hue so if i hit shift d x shift d x shift d x we'll just do that a couple more times 
Now all I have to do is change this number and give completely random seed. Let me just hide the original anemones. And now if you want to randomize the animation of the tentacles and the bodies, that's easy enough. So I'm just going to box select these. I'll select this one. I'm going to hit delete. So we just select this one. We change up a few settings in here. So maybe we'll give it a few more tentacles. Maybe reduce the thickness master. Maybe increase the noise magnitude. And we can also change the noise W animation. So I'm going to start on five. Hit I to replace that keyframe. Go to the last frame. Replace that with 10. Hit I to replace that keyframe. And we can also, maybe I can reduce that down to 8 because they're a bit thinner. And 16. Maybe I can give it a bit of distortion. 0.5. And we'll change the seed as well. And to change the wave modifier. So if I mute the geometry nodes on both of these, you can see they've both got exactly the same animation. So all I need to do is select one of these. I'll open up the wave modifier and I'm going to change the offset. Just make sure they're in negative values because if you go into plus values, the wave modifier, it will just stop animating. I'll give you a demonstration. It will start animating on frame 100 and we don't want that. So just type in a negative value. Any negative value should do. Maybe you can also increase the speed on one. So I'll just re-enable the geometry nodes on these. That's the CN enemies done. I might increase the size of these, S2. Maybe increase this one, S2. I'm gonna hit G, X, bring this across to around about there. Grab this one, G, X, bring this across to around about there. And maybe we can bring them forward a bit. So I'm gonna shift select both of these. I'm gonna hit numpad three to go into side view. I'm gonna hit G, Y, bring them forward so they're not intersecting at all. I'll hit M to move, and I'm gonna move them to the an enemies one collection. I'm going to mute my normal collection just so I hide my lamp and my camera. I'll then go to wireframe. I'm going to hit numpad one and then I'm going to box select everything and I'm going to center it. So I'm going to hit G, X and we'll just center it in the scene. Excellent. I'll then go to viewport shading. I'm going to re-enable my collection with my lights and my camera. I'm going to hit numpad zero to go into camera view. Select my camera. I'm going to go to my camera settings. Maybe I'll set this to... 40 millimeters. I'll also go to my object data for my camera. It's going to bring this back until it encompasses everything in the scene. Maybe 32 meters. That looks good. Maybe change the height of the camera to two meters. I'll then go to my camera data. I'll then increase the Y tilt shift. So I've got everything in frame. Let's just go to rendered view quick. See what we've got. Okay, it's time to move on to lighting. So we'll just make a simple scene here and we'll put some lights in the scene. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Add Mesh, and we choose Mesh Plane S25 to scale it up by 25. I'll then hit Control A and apply the scale. Tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit number two to edge select. To select this edge here. I'm going to hit numpad one. I'm just going to hit E, Z, and we drag it up to around about there. That's 20 meters. I'll then select this edge. Control B to bevel. And I'm going to add some cuts, maybe 12 cuts, something around there. I'll then tap out of edit mode, Z, shade smooth. I'm going to hit numpad zero to go into camera view. Maybe we can scale this up because I want it to encompass the whole scene. So I'm going to hit S, scale. I then tap into edit mode. I'm going to select this edge here. I'm going to hit G, Z, just drag this up just so it's above the camera there. Tap out of edit mode, hit control A and apply the scale again. I'm going to add a new material. I'm going to hit N to close that end panel. I'll then go into viewport rendering. Maybe I'll go to my render settings and I'll turn on denoising for the viewport. And I'm going to change the color to a really dark color, maybe even black. I'll increase my roughness to 0.75. And under specular, I'm going to turn the IOR level down to 0.25 a bit less specular okay we're making good progress so now we're going to tackle the lighting what i'm going to do is i'm going to select both of my lamps and i'm going to hit delete and we're going to start afresh the first light i'm going to add to a scene will be a spotlight so i'm going to hit shift a and i'm going to go to light and choose spot i'll then hit numpad one to go into front view i'm just going to hit g z i'm going to drag my spotlight up to around about here i'll then go into camera view by hitting numpad zero i'm going to go to my rendered view and now under my spotlight settings down here i'm going to turn the power up to let's say 2000 watts just see if that's made any difference maybe 20,000 watts 
maybe I'll just select this background and I'm going to turn the base color up to a white color just so we can see what we're doing a bit better so in my world settings over here the background color is set to gray with a power of one alternatively in your shader editor down here we can navigate to where it says object and we go to world and I'm just going to turn the world strength all the way down to zero now the only light in our scene is this spotlight so if I mute it everything should be black apart from the tips of the anemones okay I'm just going to re-enable the spotlight I'm going to select the spot I'll then go to my light data tab down here I'm going to change the color to kind of a bluish tone maybe something around there maybe I can decrease the strength to let's say 10,000 watts I'm also going to increase the blend to 100% and this will just make the edges so they're smoother maybe I'll increase the spot size to 75 degrees okay I can now reduce the strength even more so I'm going to go for 2,500 watts okay i'm liking the look of that i only want the render preview to occur within frame at the moment it's rendering outside the frame so i'm just going to select my camera i'm going to go to my camera data down here and under viewport display under pass pull out i'm going to increase this to 100 percent and now the rendering only occurs within the frame of the camera so the next lamp i'm going to add will be an area lamp so i'm going to hit shift a go to light and choose area i then hit numpad 3 to go into side view i'll hit g I just drag this across to around about here i then hit r to rotate that and i want this to be a backlight so the light shines through so we can see the subsurface scattering i hit numpad one to go into front view i'm going to change it from square to rectangle and i'm going to increase it on the x-axis so it encompasses the viewport so i'm just going to drag this x slider until it encompasses the viewport something around there i'm then going to go into rendered view i'm going to turn up the power to 2500 watts maybe increase the power to 5000 watts we're getting a bit of subsurface scattering here maybe i can hit g z and we'll just drag this up so it's a bit higher i hit numpad 3 let's go into side view i'm gonna hit r rotate it round and i'm gonna hit g z bring it back down in fact i'll bring it back down to the floor level and then i'll hit r angle it up slightly i'll then hit numpad 0 to go into camera view okay i'm gonna mute my spotlight just to see the results of the area light on its own okay i might reduce the strength back down to 2500 watts maybe i'll reduce the strength of that area light to 1000 watts okay i'm kind of happy with that so the next light i'm going to add will be a sun lamp so i'm just going to re-enable my overlays i'm going to hit shift a add and we go for light and choose sun hit numpad three to go into side view it's going to hit g it's going to bring this up around about there and i'm going to hit r and rotate that sun lamp around to something around about that angle i'll then hit numpad zero to go into camera view i'm going to go into rendered view over here i'm going to mute my area lamp so we've only got the sun lamp being viewed in the scene i'll go to my object data and with the sun lamp i'm going to reduce the x rotation to something around 75 degrees perhaps i'll then open up the lamp data tab i'll then go to the angle and i'm going to increase the angle to 75 degrees okay i'm going to re-enable my spot lamp i'm going to re-enable the area light i'll select the background i'm going to quickly change this from world shader to object shader and then i'm going to change the color of the background to black just for the minute i don't like the effect that that area light is having on the background plane so i'm going to actually take my area light i'm going to hit delete i'll then select the background and and we'll increase the brightness of the base color something around there okay i'll go to viewport shading and then going to hit shift a add and we choose mesh cube i'll then hit sx 50 control a and apply the scale i'm going to hit numpad 3 to go into side view sz 0.25 Control A and apply the scale. I'll then go to wireframe. I'm going to hit G and grab this object and place it up here somewhere, somewhere around about there. I'll then hit R, hold down Control, snap it. So it's kind of pointing at the background here. So we're going to add two materials on this one. The first one will be the material from this background. So let's just call this dark. So I'll select this object. I'm going to add that dark material. I'll then click this material tab over here. I'm going to add a new material. We'll click new and we'll call this color. I go to viewport shading for the dark material i'm just going to give this a viewport color so the viewport display i'm going to change to black i then hit tab to go into edit mode i'm going to hit free to go into face select i'm going to select this face i'll then scroll up on my materials select for color and click assign tab out of edit mode so we're going to delete this principal bsdf i'm going to hit shift a and we'll go for shader emission i'll plug the emission into the surface i hit shift a we go for texture noise texture i then hit Control t and i'm going to use the object coordinates for this I'll change it from 3D to 4D. I'm then going to hit Shift A, go to Color, and we choose Hue Saturation Value. I'm going to pop the color from the noise texture into the color socket of the Hue Saturation Value, and the color from the Hue Saturation Value into the color of the emission. Maybe I'll set the emission to 25 see what that looks like hit numpad zero to go into camera view i'm going to go into rendered view i'm then going to turn the saturation up to 10 
and we'll decrease the scale to 0.1 so now we've got these colorful lights at the top and we can animate those colors with this factor here maybe i'll just go into viewport shading i hit numpad period to zoom into the that object i just want to see what kind of speed i need to animate this at so on frame one on the noise texture i'm going to hit i to add a keyframe i'm going to skip to the last frame which is frame 240 i'm going to type in five I'm going to hit I and add a keyframe there. I then go onto my timeline. I'm going to hit T and choose linear. Now if I skip back to the first frame, I'll just mute the anemone collection just so I can play back in real time. I'll then hit play. And I just want to see the speed of which this changes. Okay, maybe it can be a bit faster. So I'm going to go to my last frame. I'm going to change it from five to 10 and then hit I. And then if I push play, we can see the rate of change of the lights. Maybe we can increase that to 20. Hit I, I'll then hit play. There we go. They're moving a lot faster now. Excellent. So now if I hit numpad zero to go into my camera view, I'll just go into rendered view. I'm going to re-enable the anemones collection. I'm just going to mute all the lights except for that light bar. So with that cube object, which is the rainbow lights, I'm just going to rename this to light bar. I'm going to mute my spot and I'm going to mute the sun lamp. Now I'm going to re-enable the lights one by one. So I'm going to mute the light bar. I'm going to enable my spot lamp. This is so I can isolate each individual light so I can see what effect it's having on the scene. Okay, we definitely need to turn the power of this up. I'm going to change it to 5000 watts. I'm going to increase that to 10,000 watts. In fact, I'm going to change it to 25,000 watts. Okay, now we're seeing some effect on the scene. It's nice and subtle. I'll mute that light. I'll then go to my sun lamp. I'll decrease the X rotation to 45 degrees. I'll then re-enable my spotlight. I'll then re-enable the light bar. I'm going to select the background and I'm going to decrease the color to a darker color and maybe increase the specular to 0.5. I think we need to add some backlight in this scene and I'm going to do that with some spotlights. So I'll go to viewport shading. I'll then hit shift A, add and we choose light and I'm going to choose spotlight. I'll then hit numpad three to go into side view. I'm going to hit G to bring it up to round about there. I'm going to hit R and rotate it 90 degrees. I'm going to go to my light data panel and I'm going to increase the spot size to round about 60 degrees. Okay, I hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I then go into rendered view. I might mute all my other lights. So I'm going to mute the sun, the original spotlight and the light bar. And now I'm going to turn the power of this new spot up. So I'm going to rename this to backlight spot and I'm going to increase this value to let's say 200 watts as a starting point. Maybe increase that to 500 watts. Okay, we're starting to get a bit of subsurface scattering shining through here now. I'm going to increase the power to 1000 watts. Yep, that's definitely coming through now. So I'm going to hit numpad 7 to go into top view. And instead of creating a duplicate of this, I'm going to create an instance. I hold down Alt and hit D and then X. And that creates an instance. So I'll do that again. Alt D, X. And I'll drag this across to round about there. And the reason why I'm doing instances is because if I change a value on this lamp, it's going to affect all these other instance lamps. So now if I hit numpad zero to go into camera view, I'll go to viewport shading. The translucency is coming through on there. Maybe I can turn it up a bit more though. I'm going to turn it up to 5,000 watts. Maybe I'll increase the radius to 0.25. And now we just need to make a couple more instance spotlights for these bottom ones. So I'll go into viewport shading and with this middle lamp selected, I'm going to hit Alt D, bring this down to around about here. I'm going to hit numpad three to go into side view. Hit G, just bring this down to around about there. And I'm going to hit R and rotate that up. I'll hit G, just bring it back slightly, something around about there. Okay, I'll hit numpad seven to go into top view. I'm going to hit Alt D and X. And I'll drag this across to around about there. Hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'm going to rendered view and see what we've got so far. Okay, there's some subsurface scattering coming through there. Excellent. So I'm going to re-enable the light bar. I'm going to re-enable the spot lamp. I'm going to increase the spot lamp strength actually to 50,000 watts. And I'll re-enable the sun lamp. I might select the sun lamp and change the tone to a slightly orange tone, something around there. I'll then select the background and I'll decrease the color on the base color. Maybe I'll select the light bar and increase the strength to 100 watts. And I'll select the sun and I'll increase the strength to 
Excellent, so with my camera selected, for the final touch I'm going to add a particle generator which I made in a previous tutorial. To get this you can either follow the particle generator tutorial that I made or you can sign up to my Patreon as a free member and then you get to download it for free. I'll leave a link to that in the description to append the particle generator. You either go to file and click append, I use F4 so I'm going to hit F4, click append, locate the file, it should be called particle generator GN Fotini by design YouTube tutorial project file so I'll double click that file I then go to object and I'm going to select the particle generator GN and I hold down control and I'm going to select the dust particle too I then click append I'll then select my particle generator and I'm going to go to my modifiers over here I'll just drag this up so we can see what we're doing I'll then hit numpad one to go into front view and for the negative value I'm just going to bring this up to around about there just so it's just below the surface and for the plus Z value I'm going to bring this up all the way up to round about there I hit numpad zero to go into camera view just to make sure it's above the camera frame I then hit numpad one and then on the negative X I'm just going to drag this across until it encompasses the entire scene maybe negative 20 I'll drag the plus X to positive 20 I'll then hit numpad three to go into side view and I want these particles to come really close to the camera because I'm going to add depth of field to this so on the negative Y I'm just going to drag this all the way until it's about two meters away from my camera now if I hit numpad one I'm also going to change the density so maybe I'm going to go for 10,000 particles now if I go into rendered view by default it's going to be using the fire particle because that's how I set it up so in your fire particle collection up here I'm going to click the fire particle and I'm going to change the material to dust excellent so now I'm going to reselect the particle generator I'll then select my overlays I'm going to temporarily mute the anemones maybe I'll drop the density down just while I set up the particles so I'm going to hit five thousand that will do for now i'm just going to go into viewport shading so if i hit play they're all going to rise up kind of like embers from a fire so i'm going to decrease the z speed to let's say 2.5 so they're going really slow i'm going to increase the wobble to let's say two i'm going to decrease the noise scale to one maybe i can decrease the wobble to 1.5 and increase the noise scale to two in fact i'll decrease the wobble to one Okay, I'm kind of liking the motion of that. I'm just going to drag this up. I'm going to increase the density to 10,000. I know it seems a lot, but when we go into rendered view and turn off your overlays, it won't actually seem that many, especially when we've got our depth of field. So if I go to camera and I'm going to go to camera data down here, I'm going to enable depth of field. And what we need to do, I'll just go to viewport shading and overlays. I'll hit numpad free to go into side view. We can see if I go to the object data over here, we can see the camera is 32 meters away from the center. And if I enable my anemones, you can see that these anemones are in the center. And so when I go to my camera data over here and under depth of field, we're going to set the distance to 32 meters. I'm going to turn my blades all the way up to 16. I want quite a heavy depth of field on this one so I'm going to type 0.7. That should give us quite a heavy depth of field with 40mm focal length. Now if I hit numpad 0, go into camera view, I'm going to go to rendered view and all the particles that are close to the camera will be out of focus and all the particles close to the anemones should be in focus. With this level of depth of field these front anemones might be slightly out of focus so we can in fact decrease the focal distance to let's say 31 meters. Now the depth of field should be averaged between these anemones and these foreground anemones. And for the final render, I'm also going to select this anemone here. I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to disable the wave modifier for render and viewport. The same as with this one for render and viewport. And with these ones for the armature. So I'm going to select the first armature here. I'm going to increase this window. I then change this to graph editor. And if you remember, we set up the restrict frame range. I'm actually going to turn the restrict frame range off for both X and Z. And I'm going to do the same for the other two armatures as well. Okay, now I'm going to change this back to my shader editor. In fact, we've got no use for this window now. So I'm going to take my cursor to the bottom left here until I see this crosshair. I'm then going to left click 
and drag and close that window all together. The final stage will be rendering. So I'm going to go to my render tab up here. I've got GPU compute set and for my final max samples, I'm going to set to 1024 with a noise threshold of 0.025. Under light paths, diffuse and glossy, I'm going to keep it 4. Transmission at 12. Transparency 8. We probably don't need any transparency, but I'll keep it on 8 anyway. And I've disabled reflective and refractive core sticks. I'll scroll all the way to the bottom. I've actually got mine set to filmic. It's probably better using AGX or something like that but I've got mine set to filmic, medium high contrast, and then I'll go to my output over here. My resolution is 1920 by 1080. I've also enabled this render region option here, so it only renders out what's in the camera. That's for working in viewport mainly. If you click this icon here, you set a file destination for where you want to save your frames. I've saved mine in a folder called like and subscribe. Thanks folks. You absolute legends. I'm going to choose a file format of OpenEXR and I'm going to set the codec to DWAA lossy and this will create a smaller file size than what a PNG does but it has a lot more dynamic range so when you bring your images into a video editor like DaVinci Resolve that's what I use it will give you a lot more dynamic range to play with the highlights shadows and saturation values on the color. I'm going to keep mine set to half you can set yours to full and then go to your viewport settings and hit control F12 and that will render out your image sequence. Just a quick note, I know I sound like a robot sometimes. I'm kind of verbally challenged. That's due to my autism. For every sentence that I say, I've actually probably said it like three or four times and I have to edit out all those mistakes. It's a bit of a pain, but I do my best. So that's the tutorial in a nutshell. I hope you found this useful. Have a great day, level up and thanks for watching.